In this project, we want a list of expenses showing the user's input. And previously, we have done this with an at state array. Here though, we'll take a different approach. We're gonna create an expenses class and then we'll attach that to our list using at state object. This might sound like we're overcomplicating things a little bit here, but actually it makes things easier because we can make the expenses class load and save itself seamlessly. It'll be almost invisible, as you'll see. First, we're gonna decide what an expense is. What do we want an expense to store? In this instance, it'll be three things. The name of the expense, whether it's business or personal, and its cost as a double. We're gonna add more to this later on, but for now we can represent all this using a new expense item struct. We'll put this into a new Swift file, called expense item.swift. So press command then make a new file, choose Swift file, and then call this thing expense item. Like that. You can, if you want to, put it straight into content view, but it's a good idea to break it up and put it into its own file if possible. So we'll say in here, we have a struct called expense item, expense item, not expensive item with a name string and a type string and an amount double. So now we have something here that can represent a single expense. The next step is to create something that stores an array of these expense items in a single object. This has to conform to the observable object protocol so we can use uh, the at state object property wrapper. We'll then use at published to say, uh, my items array should have change announcements published as they happen. As for expense item, make another new file, uh, choose Swift file. I call this thing expenses. And as with the struct again, we'll start off simple and add more to it over time. So my class for now will have just class expense is, is an observable object at published var items is an array of expense item, like that. That finishes all the data required for our main view. We have one struct here to represent a single item of expense and a class to store an array of all those items. Let's now put those into action in our Swift UI view so we can actually see some data on the screen. Most of this will be a list view showing the items in our expenses, but because we want users to be able to delete items that they no longer want, we can't use a simple list. We've got to use a for each inside the list so we can add the on delete modifier. First things first, we'll make an instance of our expenses class here at state object var expenses equals expenses. Remember, using at state object here, our Swift UI to watch the object for any change announcements. Anytime one of those at published properties changes, the view will refresh its body. And critically, it's only used when creating a class instance. All the other times you'll use at observed object instead to reuse an existing instance. Second, we want this expenses object to used with a navigation view, a list and a for each to create our basic layout. So I'll say there is a navigation view Inside there will be a list. Inside there will be our for each. Going over expenses dot items with ID of backslash name item in. And then say a text view of item dot name and the navigation title of I expense. That tells the for each here to identify each expense in the array uniquely by its name, then prints the name out as the list row. Now we're gonna add two more things to our simple layout before we're done here. The ability to add new items for testing purposes and the ability to delete items with a swipe. We'll let users add their items soon, but first it's important to check that our list actually works before we continue. So we're gonna add a toolbar button down here. It adds an example expense item just for us to work through now. So add this modifier now. Toolbar has a button inside. 
at expense equals a new expense item for name of test type of personal amount of five and then we'll do expenses dot items dot append that expense all being well there we go and the label will be simply image with system name of plus an sf symbol that brings our app to life so you can go ahead and launch a thing now and then press plus repeatedly to add lots of testing expenses so i'll press plus here and then it'll slide in again 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 now we can add expenses we can also write code to remove them this means adding a method down here capable of receiving an index set and removing the whole bunch of items from our array at the same time so we'll say func remove items at offsets index set here expenses dot items dot remove at offsets at offsets even offsets to attach that to swift ui we want to add an on delete modifier to our for each on delete perform remove items like that and now try it again so i'll press plus a bunch of times hopefully there we go then swipe to delete and delete and delete and it will all work nicely now remember when we're saying the id is backslash dot name we're saying we can identify every item uniquely inside our expense items by its name which is not true here they've got a name test multiple times which of course is test data but in practice they might say lunch 5 10 50 times we don't know we cannot guarantee the name is unique and so you'll see this large warning in here the id test occurs multiple times this will give undefined results Undefined means it might work, it might not work, who knows? <laughs> um, often, like now, it will just work, but sometimes it will cause the most bizarre, broken animations in your project. So let's look at a better solution next.